Hi, my name is Brian, and I work at the Technical Support Department at Micro Center. Today, I'm going to talk about some very common mistakes people make when running Ethernet cable. One big mistake a lot of would-be cable installers make in both business and home installations is making your cable run too close to banks of fluorescent lighting. These light fixtures, unfortunately, can produce a large amount of electrical interference, which can cause problems in many scenarios, including network cable installation. When running cable, we want to avoid the fixtures as much as we can. We also want to avoid high-voltage wiring, like AC power cables, etc. If passing near or around these fixtures is unavoidable, we need to minimize our contact with the high-interference lighting. We should also be concerned with excessive looping of cables in general. When copper wire is looped, like in my extreme example, this can cause electromagnetic interference to build up in the cable, thus causing signal loss. One or two of these loops is okay to account for cable slack, but you should never loop cable this tightly in an actual installation. Finally, we need to address plenum and PVC cable. Most Ethernet cables are encased in PVC, which is fine for most home, in-wall, and ceiling installations, but does produce toxic fumes when burned. Think of plastic burning smell. Plenum cable burns at a much higher temperature than PVC, and produces fewer toxic fumes as well. It also tends to be more expensive. However, many cities have regulations requiring the use of plenum cable, usually when used with a drop ceiling that feeds the building's ventilation system. Ask a building inspector or local building commission for the local regulations in your area if you're unsure if your building requires the use of plenum cable. Thanks for watching.